So yes, as I said, I think we should, uh, yeah, let's do it more as a conversation. Um, I have it here. I have not pushed it to the repo, so I will I will do my commit after. So it's on my local file, and then we'll see. I move that here just two of us. So I think one of the learning objectives of the chapters is well, obviously we are playing with the logical vectors which is an atomic type. We are doing a lot of comparing elements and running predicate into that. You have basically two situations on that, as a be integer or double precision float. I think this is like the hardest part of the, the chapters for me it was. Mm -hmm. That was the part that I needed. And then we'll see logical operation, which is like, I feel easier than the double float precision stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's double float precision, by the way. Should change that later. Okay, so let's go by creating a quick vectors. So I just have like a quick command, like so we can run some of them. Um, as we have seen in the previous chapters, we can definitely create them with a concatenate uh, function. You can I like the way also of sampling them. That's why I included here. Uh, mm -hmm. the trick is like if the typo here, but like if you if you do not add the replace true, you will run into an error. And I do it. Symbol. Combine. Uh, uh, yeah, I will use the bad stuff, so you shouldn't <laughs> do that. And the author give a good example why you shouldn't do that, because like uh, T and F are not reserved. Uh, are not reserved word. So you could previously uh, have assigned something yeah. to T. Mm, but like, yeah. yeah, for just a basic example, it's good enough. I don't need prob, like I can just do it that way. Mm -hmm. And then I run into an error, which is mm -hmm. quite informative because like um, by default, it's replacing as false. So I do not have enough population to sample on. Mm -hmm. I assume if I do that, it works. Yeah, yeah. Or if I do, True, place the true, and then, yeah, it works. So quite, I think this is quite, this one, I will use it a lot. I think it's quite useful. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the other one is classic. Um, nothing really particular, like ring to my hair here, except like this, this step, I will probably fail at it. So now we are going to use comparing elements. Um, we have the, the usual <clears throat> binary operators. No, Mac, I don't want to do anything <laughs> like that. Um, which is like uh, less than, greater than, uh, inferior, equal, uh, greater, and equal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this is the not equal sometimes like... Um, like in word SQL, I think like the not and the not equal is this one. Could be I have seen this one too in other languages. But as far as I know, uh this is like very straightforward. Uh the operate element wise, which I can copy past it. I mean, this is running, but like it's good to have it also like here. Uh, obviously one is not equal to two, two is equal to two, and three is equal to three, and eight is not equal to uh, four. So it's it's quite useful. Uh, apply the recycle rules. So here three, uh, this is identical if I have made rep three, five, one to five, I guess. Let's see if I do not strip myself, yes. <laughs> uh, so they are equal um, it's true like for a lot of uh, I don't know if you are like more using Python or if you do not use NumPy most uh, of them are for me yeah but, yeah. yeah so it, it's 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 probably like uh, intuitive but if you use the languages mm -hmm. it could be like less intuitive so I did I did find the uh and I didn't know this before reading this, but especially there's this exercise 3.5 where he kind of tries to get you to ponder the distinction between the double equal sign and then the function identical. Yeah. 
Um, and I, I, I did find that a little bit confusing. It seems like identical is actually the preferred uh, way to do comparisons. Yeah, um, and then I didn't really understand what, why you would ever use the double equal sign. I mean, um, you use it mostly on integers. I see. So if you have, yeah, so it, if you just don't think there's any strange stuff and going on that, yeah. you use it like, for example, if you have like some ID or characters, you will mm. use the double equal equal sign because like mm. they are fixed. But if you use like some numeric stuff, you shouldn't use it. Mm. And anyway, I think there is a case of like a lot of people use Waldo or some package uh, for mm -hmm. the replacing the identical. Yeah. But yeah, good good catch. Like, yeah. um, I think I will mention that right after that. Comparing elements. So this is here. Mm -hmm. Testing equality on Anna is not correct because like, what does I do not know? Equal, equal, I do not know could mean. Could mean, mm -hmm. so I don't know. <laughs> uh, and this is why you should use is any, which return element wise. So yeah. let's do it is any uh, combine uh, let's go any one two three and it's right on two four four faults which is quite powerful uh if you want to generate an indexer an index mm -hmm. like usually like this yeah. is something like i do a lot like my filters equal something testing in a and then i index my vector table with the this fighters right yeah that makes sense so uh this is That's a yeah. cool i like that so this that is actually. like very useful uh this a is any you have also is finite and is not a number which i do not use too much so if we check i will, I will, I will be more yeah i i almost never use that i i guess i don't ever deal with um values that would you know, I, I mostly deal with integers and kind of, uh, you know, so I, I don't really often get values that aren't numbers, but uh, yeah, I, I almost never use NAN. Yeah, I, it's, yeah, I could see it coming because like, as we will see letters, air uh, perform like, for example, into an if else operation, it will perform all the operation on every element and returning something with a warning, even if one of the element did not match it. Mm -hmm. so yeah. here let's say like for example uh, i do not know but like you have a division by zero or something like that and uh, uh we'll return you some word results and you are working because sometimes like the data is not clean or it's weird stuff happen and then i see that a good way of testing it but let's 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 take them it's fine it's good to read the pages so it returns a vector of the same length as x, indicating which element are finite and not finite. Um, so specifically mm -hmm. defined by inf and minus inf. That's kind of uh, and I mean that's numbers. Nothing very particular on that. Mm -hmm. oh, it can work for imaginary complex. I don't know if I run into that in my life in R, but. Yeah. Do I have something particular here? No. Complex are infinite. Okay. Yeah, especially say like do not test equality to n n n or identical since I think I do not know, but I think it's because behind the scene the the op the logical operators um run some particular function and mm -hmm. I think is finite and isn't it run a different one because mm -hmm. it's difficult to see because they are primitive so we can't inspect them and yeah, unlike yeah. going into the R code but this this could be a nice exercise once mm -hmm. oh that's good, good. so it's also written like uh it's written x but also will return like the eventually like the mm -hmm. name or the dimension the names yeah which can be interesting as an attribute. It can be useful. That was another thing from chapter. I mean, I know we're not going to do chapter four, but uh, yeah, 
I never use attributes. You know, I so, sometimes use names. And I, I guess I was just, you know, the person that he's making fun of a little bit for not really knowing about attributes in R. But um, yeah. I mean, as a user, a lot of time you do not need to know because like yeah. you are using other stuff. I mean, you use it at kind of like the name of a data yeah. frame. You use it a lot, but yeah. without knowing like the correct yeah. language. So like sometimes though, I feel the author is a bit like snarky unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. you all, at once, you all need to learn something now. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, so I that's, guess that's for chapter four, but. Yeah. And see, like, okay. Like, I <laughs> this morning, someone like uh, share, share this link. So I will probably, um, it's probably in my story. Um, uh, I just have where I found it. Um, well, I will share it later, but um, hmm, history. I close it somewhere. Right, let's go in first, and then so I share it here. Uh, this is what this link. It was shared to, today. And I think like, who wrote this shit? Um, <laughs> uh, and it's very good because like, yeah, at one time we all criticize yeah. for not knowing something and it makes us feel intelligent, but everyone needs to learn at one time, you know, yeah. and everyone's watching bad cuts. So yeah, that's my, I, I totally agree on that. And okay, it make make you look smart, but sometimes, you know, yeah, you need to learn, you, you probably had to learn another bunch of stuff. Yeah. But like, Anyway, let's go back to it. Um, dealing with integer and floating point numbers. Okay, doing math with integer is always kind of safe. I mean, I'm saying that, but if you check, so it's not from the book, like it's mm -hmm. the internal of R. Like on my machine, it's probably like different mm -hmm. of the machine you're gonna run. This is the max integer value I get. So something like 2 million something. Uh, I can do it right now here. Yeah, I think that's what I'm, I think that's the same number I get on my machine too. Which right. is supposed to be normal because like we probably have yeah. like similar similar mesh. I, I should have like a Raspberry Pi kind of somewhere. Architecture. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I have I have a Raspberry Pi too. I should test it on there and and it's here. Yeah. yeah, and as a so it's it's produced these numbers, but you can still uh like do an overflow on it. And overflow is like basically like because the way you are storing value is inside of a bytes, which mm -hmm. is uh, a certain uh, way of storing value. And um, at one point, uh, you need to specify like every architecture can have a different way of storing it. And the language need to know how to target it in yeah. every architecture. And if you do like, finally, you need to specify an integer. That's how you do it. Uh, and it produces an overflow and it's kind enough to, to gen it produces an NA and I get a warning, but it's still valid. Mm -hmm. So weirdly, like if you run something, you will not stop. You did, I did not produce an error yeah. message. So it's mm -hmm. something like worth knowing, but it's kind of like very technical. Yeah. Um, the floating point number are limited because yeah, yeah, we are just using eight bytes. Here I use kind of the same example that I'm using. So, and it, it should be different also in what kind of architecture you are using. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and this explain why uh, 0.1 and 0.2 does not equal uh, 0.3. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, if we decide to print 0.1 with formats, uh, I think is that, no, format equal. What did I use here? No, digits. Mm. Oh, let's go with 10 is enough. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it didn't work for me either. I think, why? Does I think it, if we uh, in the, in the book he talks about if you represent it in binary form, it, oh. it uh, so I need to convert it in binary. I think, but I, 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 I can't remember how I did that. I don't know. Um, Probably there is something like R convert to bin to bin. Let's see Stack Overflow. <laughs> 
into bits. Yeah, but like. Um, yeah, you are reverting it. It's kind of. Oh, this one is very fancy. Anyway, no need to go into this rabbit loop, I feel. Yeah, but yeah, I understand the. Let's go. Let's see, like, what does he use? Still verify it. So we can, I think, how does he shit his way? Oh, that's why he used that. Oh, wow. Oh, he used he used them to combine. He used a combine. That's kind of mm. why does combine change the result here? Let's see. Yeah, that's interesting. That's very like. No, <laughs> I do not. Oh, I think it changed the parameters probably. In the um, in the format somewhere. Hmm. In his session, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how he got. I think he, what what parameter he changed. I think he changed an option inside of the R session to to change yeah. that. Yeah. Let me try if because I'm in Radian. Let me try. No, not exit. It's Q. Uh, let me try base R instead, and see if I print. Exactly the same stuff than him. I got the same. Point one plus. I'm gonna be a bit lazy. Point one plus point one. I paired a bit of readability here. One, two, three, and then point three. Digits 22, but that should not change too much. Yes. So it was maybe like Radian yep. was like not doing it. Let's go back. Exit. I uh, know. Here. And then, no. Uh, right. Yeah. Let's see if Apple is smart enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I sometimes use radian, so I'd I'd be very interested if it comes back. Oh no, it's a digit oh. number. I see. Okay, I didn't put digit, digit okay. enough. Okay. I think. Interesting. So yeah, okay. it's sure like at one point. Yeah. It's because probably ten. See. Let's go seventeen. Yeah, at seventeen it starts working. Yep. Okay, so we figure it out. So mm. before it, I think sixteen. I will probably put it uh, Okay. That was smart. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So what can we do? Uh, the round is an Israel trick. So you basically yeah. convert it to an, int an integer. But I like, like, an author likes, uh, should mm -hmm. put an S here, uh, apps the X minus Y, yeah. the, an absolute versus a very small number. So you do something like that, which is smart also. And probably like very fast. Yeah. So if we need to test something like that, basically like you should convert it that way, which can be painful. Okay, logical operation. Um, here I went into like because it, it used this term predicate but does not define it, and I hate that. Um, so predicate, I, I I try to search a bit online, and it's basically mm -hmm. like because in the geo world we use it also like for um, is within distances or intersect. So we have also like a geometry predicate. We try mm -hmm. to predicate all two mm -hmm. objects relate, and here the same idea, but it's more like in the logical term. And then equal could be a predicate like that two subjects are the same, and it returns true or false. Mm -hmm which in my understanding is a result of predicate. So uh, so we have like the usual one, um, but we have mm -hmm. all of them are taking only two arguments. Remember, they are mm -hmm. binary operators. Yeah. So like it went a lot in the book on how can we combine them? And then the, let's bring like the, the not. 
which is a unary one, which is basically like reverse, you oh, take yeah. only one argument and reverse it, which is, the, I think is the one that has the most tricky. And then you have the end, the R or the exclusive R. And we will see like their scalar counterpart in chapter eight, which is like the double um, hand mm -hmm. and the double um, yeah. R. Um, I think they are quite uh, intuitive. I don't, I didn't went into it, but I think this one is the most tricky one. Yeah, because, I agree. For example, yeah. if mm -hmm. we do like true, let's say um, true and false, that give us true. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, I'm quite, I think it should be false because mm -hmm. it reverse everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think like this one is is read is read like that, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. which can be like quite difficult uh, in some operation. I, I, I let me see. So it reversed all all syntaxes. So this is the one that I see. I feel like could be, I could be wrong. Sure. I could yeah. fail on this one. Uh, let's. Well, I don't think. Missingness. So on the missingness, I learned that. <laughs> I mean, I, I never like get it correctly, but like any a true. Well, this one makes yeah. sense because like you yeah. already have one true. So this one is easy. But this one, like you need to NA be true. Yeah. So it, it, it returns something. So it's better to say NA because like it depends on what NA could be. So I yeah. decide to be like, I mean, safe. Uh, in doubt, uh, you should build a quick true stable, and I think this is a good way of doing it and checking your understanding a lot. And the true stable is like the author I've built, so you basically like do all the options and make them together. Like the option is like as a like bill is gonna take the value of true, false, any. And then Bob, and then for example, like uh, I can just do like it will recycle, so I can just do true and Bill, and then you can check like um, mm -hmm. so true is true, and NA we saw it like um, yeah. previously. Okay. Also, this one was like um, aggregating with all any and some um, all test if any element match. Which is kind of pratic, I guess, to test if we have like something. Like the classic is like all is NA something. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably like the one like I run the must and mm -hmm. X something. Probably say I do not have. Yeah. Oops. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's not fun, but this one is correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, any is test if only one match. So I can probably run it. Uh, is in a uh, let's say combine. Oops. Any uh, one, two, three, and should be return false because not all is in a. And if I go that way and pick any, it's true because I have one. So this one. It's fine. Uh, Sam used the trick that false is zero and true is one that we will see next chapter, I think. So, well, I can do it. Yeah, but yeah, that's a con. I think I use that quite a bit. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Like everyone, it's probably going to return sure. me an error, but oh no. Yeah, because oh, he's yeah. Is returning mm -hmm. a vectors. Yeah. So, uh, of zero and one. So that's you it, can yeah. sum them. So it's, yeah. Uh, so like, yeah, this is the example that he, mm -hmm. he used in the book, just reverse. Simplify predicates. Well, I never thought too much about it before reading the book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that he, he introduced that. I still feel a bit stupid uh, because like, I'm not sure I can simplify all of them. I don't know if you tried. I did. I found that to be the hardest exercise, to be honest. Oh my um, God, yes. And yeah, and, and I didn't feel that... Uh, like I could make them different, but I couldn't make them simpler. You know, like I, I think that was the hardest part. But um, yeah. uh, and yeah. some of them, like obviously, 
this one like it is basically cover everything so if mm -hmm. i is greater than b and i is inferior than b like well yeah but like some of them like that are obvious but others in the book where like i i think you need to go to various step to to simplify it until you reach the correct uh the correct simplification i would like it if he has provided like example here on Me, one yeah I, yeah yeah because the example that you provide are kind of super easy you know like not equal not equal well yes <laughs> this yeah, one yeah. like okay but those are also that you bring an exercise are a bit odd yeah i, I felt think... like i needed to look at like uh you know kind of like intro to probability textbook or something to cut under these but um yeah they're, they're they're tricky yeah they are definitely a bit harder but yeah i manage it so I, I did the first couple of them. <laughs> skipped, yeah, me too. Skip the rest because I with pen and paper, so I should write yeah, them yeah. down. Yeah, but maybe I'll uh, I'll type mine up and maybe I'll post and see. We'll yeah. see if we uh, we'll we'll compare. I'll do that. Good. No, it's good. It's good. Good idea. Uh, but I think uh, he's correct. Is sometimes uh, you can go into a rabbit hole of like, oh, I'm doing that, that, and that without like figure. Okay, but this can be simplified at that. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good um, good text. So simplify your predicate. I should have that said if you can or if you see at least think about it. <laughs> you should think about it. That's yeah, it. and I do wonder too, like if the simpler predicates are like run faster. On yeah, the obviously okay, they do. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah, because you have less code, so yeah. they are they're run even if. Also, I think like it make maybe the business logic because sometimes like they're related to a business logic and mm -hmm. you want the business mm -hmm. logic to appear clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and sometimes like maybe the business logic is unclear so you can clarify it with that mm -hmm. way, which I think is a, another good argument for trying to simplify it and document it. Okay. Let's go in selecting element based on the condition. So. We are going to see like the huge if else function, which is like a huge, <laughs> it's super yeah. used in the R ecosystem. Uh, we will see like the if the more conditional scalar one letters, same that what we have seen previously. Uh, if else follow this syntax, you have like some uh, condition. And if else is true, then you go to T, you branch to T. And if else is false, then you branch to false. This syntax made it super clear as a T. Mm -hmm. and uh, I like it this way. So I, I, I yeah, it. that makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, this one was very funny because like, okay, so absolute can just be like cut it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's good like sometimes when you are like, you know, mm. uh, yeah, you do not know some function. Well, some some of them can be like just right, a, yeah. a huge if else. So I like it this part of the book. Um, it's also applied to recycle rules. So this this was shows like was like you, because here we are using a vectors, but that we are using basically two vectors of the same size. Yeah, so because this is the same. So it does not need to recycle, but here like we are just using like uh, a zero and the zero is recycle uh, every time in my cards. And this is it, yeah. All elements are evaluated mm -hmm. before knowing which are selected. Um uh, and that explained that we have a warning sometimes instead of an error, because like the logic of how it's down is like it should work and then the user should check it which mm -hmm. i think was kind of tricky um that's interesting i didn't catch on that the, when, uh, when i read it that was a good, a good yeah catch. it was a good catch yeah. like it explained uh -huh. the philosophy a bit and then i like it this book uh <laughs> from owen tegas and floatworks from uh so i link it to the um, i think she's giving some if you contact uh, her. I kind of uh, want that. And yeah, it explains everything in very like detail. Um, yeah, why, like, for example, uh, this this is a good catch. Like when you use GK, which is a, a, a JSON parser from the common line, and you use it on identifiers, which is way too big for an integers, uh, mm -hmm. it's it sometimes simplifies it, which is a good because like sometimes like this integers has like ID in a database and you want to have the correct one so that's it uh yeah that was it um we have a bit of time do you want to drive some do some yeah. exercise so let me see let me look to see uh 
I can't remember if I had any questions about any of the exercises. I think usually I get most of them, but uh, sometimes yeah. don't get let me go them. inside. Of, I I think I was I was good also with this one. Let um, me go inside of it. I accept like the one like with the condition. Which one was that? Uh, the, you know, like the one with the, you should simplify it. Like the three point oh yeah yeah yeah, 3 .9. That, yeah that was too different yeah that was that was quite I I'm not sure about those at all I I'll go back and try and do those and post my answers in the Slack and see if they're similar to to yours um let's see yeah I like it the 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 how you can generate like a B a B model distribution with just like uh, an if else in the model distribution because it it show you like how you can generate them and this is useful. And it's 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 fairly few line of code. Also, like that's yeah. also like very like, yeah, crazy. I actually wasn't sure about this one. That's asking about the purpose of very specific functions like log one p and and x m one. Oh. Um, I didn't really. I, I read through those help pages. Uh, I couldn't tell. It, it, so the help pages made it seem like the specialty functions were more accurate for maybe like really small values. Yeah, um, that was all I could tell. But I also would, like if that's the case, why not just have those be the base R or be the, you know, just have log whatever, you know, if you use the log, why not use the more accurate version for all the log? That, I, I, I can't answer that question. I think it's... Yeah. Uh... It's because at once when it was developed and they didn't... Maybe, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But it looked like basically they were connecting to like lower level operating system kind of functions yeah. and, and okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but that was, I wasn't sure about that one. Um, I think it was mostly because like, uh, I, I saw also like maybe, ah, you know, it needs to be course platform. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. you log this package, maybe they are loading like some C library, Matt C library or oh, some yeah. library behind the scene. So you are using it, which is not sure like to be on every platform. I don't know. Yeah. Or good, does not want guess. to deliver with that platform. That's a good question. We could ask that. That's a good a good guess. Um yeah, I think that uh was about it. And then you know, on 3.5, I was kind of wondering, you know, maybe I should just use identical for everything now. You know, I was like no. <laughs> Even though I, it looks much worse, you know, I think its readability is much worse, but uh, if it is more robust, you know, more safer, more I, reliable. I think, I think it have other kind of argument also. Like, yeah, I'm I'm reading like, it have the new equal. Uh, it have yeah. like a bunch of arguments uh, you can use sometimes that can be useful that I do not think you have in the logical operators. Yeah. Um, I still like, you know, this is, I think this is one point of contention. So a lot of people are developing code that do kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, it will be different on, yeah. I, no, I think like, yeah, you should, usually I use the, I use the equal equal, like more when I have the characters string. Okay. Yeah. Because like you want something on integers, like let's say mm -hmm. factors, and you are yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. But and when you use number, I think you should always use something like either like lower. I mean, to be fair, like the you the the cases where like a float, right? Yeah, will be inferior or equal, and then like let's say the point three will be like point two nine 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 eight. Mm -hmm. It's fairly corner cases. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Yeah, so. But I've never had a problem. I almost always have just used the double equal sign. I have never, I don't think I've ever had a problem with it, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, if you, if you are using integers and if you are using uh, a yeah. like character, you save basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's an UTF-8, UTF uh, but yeah, it's just like for floats where you can go in weird corner case. And I think it's matter if you are like in um I mean, maybe more computing um, stuff. Like, let's say, like, if you want to generate a bunch of value and compare them, then this corner case can maybe more frequently. Like the people who do Bayesian stuff and Monte Carlo stuff, right. where yeah, they yeah, generate yeah. a lot of, uh, uh -huh. I mean, fake value. They want to be maybe more precise and then uh -huh. it matters to them. So, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, I, I think those were the ones that I thought were were difficult, um, or I just didn't know the answer to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, outside of it, no. Yeah, I didn't use any for loops. <laughs> yeah, no. they didn't come to me. Yeah, so we probably like our like uh, yeah our like people like, yeah we maybe not the like target from the this book but anyway yeah. Well, it's because uh, you know when you're kind of read the tidyverse educational materials, you're you you are afraid of for loops. They're so frowned upon. So I never I never use them. I, uh, I still use them. They're great. Yeah, but they're no actually worries. useful. Yeah, anytime there's um, you know the the next result depends on the previous result. I think I, I tend to use them because they yeah, yeah. they're very useful like that. But yeah, um, window window function inside of it, like I kind of yeah. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. How did I do that cross entropy thing? Yeah, I think I just did an if else. Where did I? Where did I put that? Um, yeah, I just said if else. Uh, you know, why, which is a, a logical true or false. And then, you yeah. know, if it's true, you get negative log P. And if it's false, yeah, you get you negative can, log yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You so, can have like, uh, yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's just an if else. Yeah. Um, and then I, I took the mean of that, I guess. Yeah. Um, worked because yep. it's zero one. Yep. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm not, yeah, it didn't even occur to me to use a for loop or no. any other <laughs> vector indexing. And, yeah, no, yeah, that'd be awful. But I, I guess I see I see why when you see um, formulas written with summation notation yeah. where they have the i, I think maybe your instinct is like, oh, okay, I'll do a for loop with the with the index. Um, but yeah, it's better to just yeah. Yeah, th th this was like also the case like where. Um... Uh, on the the case on the previous exercise that uh, I get out of memory because like I I I increment the function too many times mm -hmm. like, and you can simplify it with the minus one one I don't remember or something like that mm -hmm. because like the x does not need to be on both uh, side of the equation, mm -hmm. and uh, this is like kind of uh, the book is good because it makes me think a bit more like can I simplify like the same idea with the predicate like it make me think okay can I simplify yeah. that so. It's more efficient. Yeah, I am. Um, I am very. I'm really enjoying this book. Actually, I think you. You know, even though like even these chapters are so basic, but I am still learning. Yeah. It's about, yeah. It, it's yeah. It's 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 really nice. Also, um, twelve bucks. <laughs> yeah, actually, did I did buy the I bought yeah, the print too. version because yeah, so even though I guess he didn't get any money from it, it sounds like so whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a good book. Um, okay. So we uh, did it. Yeah, and so I'll I'll plan to do at least chapter four next week. Yeah, and then if I think I can fit five, I'll do I'll do five also. Okay, let's let's do that, but let's just plan for four, and then okay. we see. Okay, okay, sounds good. Well, All right. yeah, nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Yeah, yeah, bye.